color 3D printer or not, you probably know the pain of wasted filament. Bad prints, and color printing, and well, it just piles up and mocks me. <laughs> so, I've been kind of trying to figure out what to do with all of it. Now, I've seen people grind it up, extrude new filament, and well, yeah, that's not gonna happen here. I've also seen folks melt it into silicone molds, and I even tried my own filament skull, and well, after a long time of melting filament, I think it turned out okay. But I had an idea the other day that might actually be a little more useful. At least I think it's worth testing. Here's the plan. First, I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'll start by just drawing out a simple square on a piece of wood. Then I'm going to carve it out somehow. <laughs> I just want it deep enough to fill those grooves with melted filament. And when it's done, it'll kind of look like this, only melted. That's the goal, at least. Basically, I'm going to make an inlay, and I'm hoping the filament bonds with the wood. I think it should, and well, if it works, I plan on moving to something that looks way cooler than a square. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm going to get started using a chisel. All right, so yeah, turns out I don't have any hidden chisel skills. I don't use one a whole lot, but here's an idea I should have started with. Rotary tool. Digging out the groove with a rotary tool, well, it should be way easier than a chisel, and it works faster, but obviously I stink at this. Now, I've barely used a rotary tool for anything but sanding on 3D prints, you know, and taking off bits here and there. And, well, this one's not pretty, but I think it shows that this could work. Well, that's when the next idea kind of hit me. Back to the lab. I've never owned, used, or really ever really been around a CNC machine. They're typically expensive and huge. They look amazing, and I've always wanted to try one. Of course, it would have to be small enough for my home, as well as a really great price. Well, that's why for this project, I reached out to Jen Mitsu about the new Cubico CNC. And that's how this box showed up. From what I can tell, the Cubico might be the smallest CNC out there, and that also, well, means a tiny cutting area, which means small projects. Well, that also means, hey, creativity. The work area is 150 millimeters by 110 millimeters by 40 millimeters high, and that's about six inches by four and a quarter by, wait for it, about an inch and a half high. It's not exactly spacious. And since I've never used a CNC, well, the 10,000 RPM spindle sounds impressive, and from what I've read, it seems like it's going to be enough for what all I'm planning to do. At the end, I'm going to give you a quick rundown, just so you know what worked for me and maybe any problems I run into. Well, since I've never used a CNC, you can imagine this went pretty much exactly how you might expect. There's been a horrible train wreck. I unpacked the Cubico, installed the included candle software. I put a bit in and powered it up, and well, I thought I was ready to go. You know, like a 3D printer. Well, nope. After some testing and digging through and everything, I finally figured out the candle software, that only sends G-code to the machine. That's it. So then I had to figure out where that G-code even comes from. I went through the quick start stuff, I got the calibrations done, I was even able to carve out the Test Gen Mitsu logo on the sample piece of wood. Now, it worked, but the excitement kind of faded fast because, well, it didn't exactly look great, but hey, it did work. After searching online for a while, I started to get an understanding of the whole workflow. CNC software is nothing like 3D printing software. It's kind of wild to think that 3D printing came from CN machines way back in the 50s or whenever, but the software paths, well, kind of went in totally different directions. For the most part, CNC seems to be set up as a three-step, 
three program process. And I did eventually find a few expensive software options, seem to be kind of an all-in-one, but they're mostly tied to very specific machines. But if you know a better setup, please tell me and all of us in the comments. I ran a bunch of tests to get a feel for speed and depth, and some of them took over an hour for some reason, and the results weren't even really detailed. Then I realized my spindle RPM and feed rate both were way too slow. Fixing that really helped a lot. I also learned that the included bits, well, they're not all really general purpose. The package, there's some drill bits, because I guess holes, and then the V-carved bits, which are great for tiny details, but apparently they're really easy to break, at least according to a lot of online comments. So I did even more research and seemed to find exactly what I need with this Jinmitsu CNC bit set. And by the way, I didn't intentionally get the same company branded bits. They just seemed to be the best deal. Now, after a few more tests, I can tell you that it was really worth every penny I spent. End mills for the win. Now with some tests, new bits, and a little bit of a clue of what I was doing, it was time to actually work on my project and finally, hopefully, get rid of some of that wasted filament. And the new plan is similar to the old one. Design something, turn it into G-code, send it to the CNC, and then melt filament into all of that. Easy. Now, while I'm not a big fan of Tinkercad, I use Fusion 360 usually, but for simple stuff like this, it really works. My design's not really complicated, so I'm not going to go through all the steps. Just remember, the most important thing is to make that channel for the filament. So after making the right size boxes, aligning, and grouping everything, I had my model. Now, all that's left to do is export the STL, and the design step is done. After a lot of research, I stumbled across Kirimoto. It's a browser-based slicer. And yeah, slicer. It slices FDM files, SLA files, and for my purposes here, CNC files. There's a ton of options, and I really spent a lot of time figuring out enough of those to get something usable. I do want to mention my favorite feature, though, the preview animation. It's really cool to watch it zoom through my cut and see how everything's going to turn out. And, well, if the preview doesn't show anything happening, then, well, nothing's going to happen on the CNC. And I'm pretty sure that feature saved me a lot of frustration. Since my design's so simple, I just set up what they call a roughing pass. I chose the depth and made some educated guesses based on info I found online in my previous test. And I'm sure I'm going to get more experimental later as I learn more. During all that research, I also found Gsender on GitHub. The install's really quick, but understanding all of those controls, well, not so quick. It does kind of look, though, like a 3D printer control panel, but just sort of different. What really sold me on it was the outline preview, kind of like the preview animation in Kirimoto, and I also seen this in laser engravers, but here it's not an animation. The tool head physically traces the area that you're going to cut out so you can see exactly where it's going to carve. You can tweak your position and run it again and again until everything lines up. Now, this is similar, like I said, to what I have in Lightburn on my laser engravers, and I really depend on that a lot. All I had to do then was close up the box, hit the button to send the G-code, and I'll be honest, I took a step back because, yeah, that spindle's moving really fast. But it wasn't long before I was holding a completed piece, and then I only had one thing left to do. So, melting filament is a pain. It's slow, smelly, and kind of boring. A while back, I bought a cheap toaster oven to try some stuff out, but, well, it didn't really help very much. And For this test, I thought I'd just use a heat gun and a silicone spatula. Then it was just time spent melting filament chunks into the channel. Now, is all of this safe, scientific, repeatable? Uh, I don't know, but it did work. And I'll be honest, it looked better than I expected. 
The marbling effect is really cool. Now, I did sand everything down to the wood, and there you have it. Proof of concept. I also tried rolling up the hot filament into lines and dropping them in, and well, it didn't really work all that well. I need to make those smaller, but what did work was a whole lot more simple. I just made wider channels so that they're easier to fill. Now, just so you know, I'm not giving up on all of this because I'm sure there's better ways to pack filament into those grooves, and I'm going to try other things as well. But if you have ideas, please drop them in the comments. Before wrapping all this up, I wanted to try one more thing just to help make this test piece look a little bit better. You know, take it over the top. I debated staining the wood, maybe to make the inlay pop, but then I remembered that the Cubico also came with something else. A laser module. The box says this is a compressed 5.5 watt laser. So I had to look that up to find out what they mean, and apparently it just means that the beam is squeezed, compressed, <laughs> into a very small point, which is supposed to give you finer and cleaner detail, which is more power. Now the install wasn't too bad. I did have to pull out the spindle since they use the same mount, and there's also a handful of cables in the box, no instructions, but only one of them fit the connections, and so I used that one. But after that, I opened up my familiar copy of Lightburn and just treated it like any other laser. I looked around and found a geometric pattern I like and got ready to engrave. Unfortunately, without a single controlling program for CNC and laser, lining things up was a bit of a guessing game. So instead of trying to figure that all out, I just engraved the entire piece of wooden filament together. I kept the power low and the speed high, and well, it turned out okay. I really didn't think through about how thin that beam was, so the geometric pattern I chose made those lines come out really extra fine. But that's learning, and I still think this looks great. So what do you think? Using a CNC to make inlays for melted filament? Is it a good option to deal with all that wasted PLA we have laying around? Well, for me, I'm going to give it a resounding yes. yes. But I need a lot more practice and testing before I'd give one of these away or try selling anything. And what about the Cubico CNC? Now, I really enjoyed working with it once I understood the workflow. There is a learning curve, but that's really normal, as we know, for something new and this complicated. Now, I did run into a couple of issues that I noticed online as well. There are things like the case is not closing exactly right, and so your little safety switch up here doesn't always connect. Well, this was annoying until I realized I was putting the case in weird, and the bottom grooves weren't going in exactly right. And, well, the instructions are okay, but they're really light on details on how to actually use it. But like I said, once I figured things out, it works really well, especially for the price. If you're watching this video during the 2025 Black Friday season, well, just like everybody else, they're going to be running some really big sales coming up. And I'll put those links in the description for you as well. I learned a lot about CNC's and about melting filament, and I hope maybe you did too. So please subscribe, check out my other videos, and remember, it's only wasted filament if we don't use it. So go make something cool and continue to learn, create, and amaze.